Uh, funny, this, this week in uh, Chamonix for UTMB, um, met quite a few people from Dubai there and they were like, oh, you're running now in, where do you run? What do you do out here, etc." And you know, other people that were not from, uh, from Dubai, like, how do you train in Dubai? Like, how, how, how is it in the desert? How hot is it, etc., etc. But a lot of people kind of coming from this area to, uh, to do races surrounding the UTMB, so different, that was CCC, OCC, TDS, UTMB, all these different things. And um, yeah, it's it's sort of like, um, it's a weird thing because, <laughs> and as I look out right now, I'm sort of looking at a golf club, I'm looking at Sports City, I'm looking at two tracks, uh, which I very rarely see people on. Um, uh, maybe a few sprinters. Maybe it's it, you know it's just it's been too hot for us the last and maybe they do it super early in the morning. I don't know, but is this the place to come and train for something like UTMB? Absolutely not. No, you can get some great heat training here. You can do some like like some relevant races from here for sure. Um, to go to train here and and for somebody to coach you towards, unless you've got access to an uphill, a, a decent gradient uh, treadmill and a downhill decent gradient, again, um, there's some serious incline and decline. It's the decline it's gonna mess you up. Um, your quads, your, your, your knee is a disastrous uh, uh, invention. Like the, the knee socket is um, full of ligaments and, and tendons and, you know, attaching to muscles. And if anything's gonna kind of give in first on a race, like in the mountains in 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 uh, around Mont Blanc, it's it's gonna be it's gonna probably be your quads and any kind of breaking muscles, which includes like your your shins, your calves, your kind of your hip flexors. Those are gonna be the. So I saw some people in a in real in a real mess, and again, like um, it's for most people that I met, it was kind of a checkbox. Um, like it's on my t it's on my bucket list, whatever they call it, and um, and I'm gonna do it, and then that's gonna be a line under that, and then I've, I've done that, and then I can move on to something else. And you know, if that's if, if that's what makes you tick, brilliant, no worries. Like um, you're you're, kind of, you're obviously free to do whatever you want, but the risk reward in in this and um, the amount of people that I've spoken to that have kind of like they've talked about past injuries, and it's kind of like you talk through the injury, and you talk, okay, what were you doing at the time, and what were you preparing for, and then what did you go and do, and and if you're as I say, if you're here, if you're not doing a substantial amount of training up and down heavy gradients on a treadmill you, you you've got mountains an hour away you've got you got some kind of like bumps i would say 45 minutes away um cycling truck is 30 minutes away from here which is a flat loop two flat loops 50k and 80k where would you train for utmb here i don't have a clue and i wouldn't i wouldn't even i wouldn't even train for passatore here 40k flat pretty much 40k 40k undulating um, a, a little bit, but mainly flat. 10k up, 10k down, and then 40k, uh, 40k flat at the end. To do that 10k and then to do a marathon afterwards, I would not train for that here. I would go and live somewhere, not not Italy because it would be too early, sort of April before May. But I would go and live somewhere where I can get a downhill. Um, for me, Chiang Mai is a perfect place. You know, 20k uphill on my doorstep, 20k downhill, obviously, and um, as well. So you can kind of get those reps in. You can kind of get that time where your body will adapt. And, and for the quads, it's about making them robust. The job is kind of a posture off muscle, yeah, but also a break. So if you're kind of, um, um, if, you, if you're, if you, if, you, if you kind of just start with 200 meter reps of downhill, it's gonna feel painful the next day, um, or sore, it's gonna feel sore. And then eventually with time, um, as we've said about preparing for a marathon, the best thing you can do is prepare your quads because they're going to, even on the flat, they're gonna be used in a way that they're gonna get sore. And especially in that final third, in that final quarter, 
you're gonna get shocked and, um, and that's not where you wanna be when you kind of, you know, everything else is gone, your reserves have gone, you're, you, hopefully your nutrition is on par, so you've got some, you've got less muscle damage than you would do, but that's kind of the first thing that starts to usually hurt for most people. Um, so to go and do UTMB from here, good idea? No, disastrous idea, like, disastrous idea. And anybody who thinks differently is, um, you know, you can have that mindset, which is like, um, I can, if I can see it, I can, if I can believe it, I can achieve it, and all that stuff, wonderful words. Uh, to actually to actually go and do it, like when you've kind of read about like the, the mountain disasters um, around Everest, and that, that literally is the, is the exact mindset that killed not just themselves, but people who were trying to rescue them on the mountain, people who were just trying to do their job. Um, and partly therefore as well, you know, if, you, if you're kind of a company, um, I think it was Mountain Madness and I can't remember the other company, Rob Hill's company, but it's Mountain Madness, Scott and, um, and the other company, if you're kind of t promising people that you can put them on top of the biggest mountain in the world, that's not a promise you can, uh, you can guarantee for, for anybody because if you then got people turning up and you've read every account now so you know this is this, this is the truth this has happened and i've seen it happen i've seen it happening like at annapurna base camp i've seen it happen in an everest base camp people trying crampons on for the first time it's, it's no different to people trying running shoes on for the first time before running in a marathon it's uh, it, and it's infinitely worse like on a, with, with a marathon you can just step off the course and you're done you're finished doesn't matter how much pain you think you're in you're done you can't step off a mountain and say you know what i've had enough and i want to go home there's not even a helicopter that can get to you um until you get like well down to kind of i mean i think camp two camp one um but nobody's coming to camp four for you nobody's coming to the final camp before the, the summit that's just not going to happen and going up is the easy bit it's coming down that's so you <laughs> Sort of feels a bit like that. It's like that checklist, great, no worries. But, uh, and there's checkpoints all, all over, so you can kind of pull over, I guess, and you can pull over, even if you're doing UTMB or TDS and, you know, long ones and say, you know what, I'm finished and, you know, I bit off more than I can chew. And I like that mentality, you know? I like the fact that you can bite off more than you can chew and you're gonna learn a lot on the, along the way. There's just a lot of corporate interest in, I, I, they just want it on the CV. If I was reading the CV and, um, and somebody had been training in Dubai for UTMB, I, I would question their preparation techniques. I would question, um, I would question everything about it. Like, it just doesn't make any sense. Whereas somebody said, Okay, I was living in Dubai and therefore it, it was super hot and really flat and therefore I decided to work on my 5K time or 10K time or even marathon. Um, and I would get out there and do the heat sessions because once it got to December, whenever the marathon is here and the, and the marathon in Abu Dhabi, then I could go and it would feel quite cool at seven o'clock, five o'clock in the morning whenever it starts, I don't know. Then that would be, that would seem like a good strategy for me to, to go and do, but each to their own, live and let live. Uh, but when it starts to get dangerous for other us around you, that's when I kind of check out and just, just like you do what you do, but um, just keep, keep in mind the consequences. And, and I'm not, I'm not being over dramatic. It's it's. Um, I, I just saw it a lot this week, and it was it was weird to have these conversations. Like, okay, how's your training done? And what and what do you do in your training? And kind of getting the answers back and thinking. Well, that's not going to prepare you for what you're about to do, and um, and it's going to feel, it should be, feel very easy for at least some of these guys are going to be out there for 40, 40 hours, forty eight hours is the checkout. So two days out there, probably without much sleep, um, it's going to feel it, it should feel easy for for most of that. Um, forty eight hours out there. I mean, you can walk it. You can walk. You could you could walk it quite comfortably in in 48 hours, so I just don't know. I don't know what my opinion is on it yet. 
Uh, I, I kind of, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a strange one. But, um, but yeah, there you go.